hemiplegia is paralysis of the muscles of the lower face, arm, and leg on one side of the body. In addition to motor problems, other losses may occur, for example, sensation, memory, cognition. The most common cause of hemiplegia is stroke, which damage the corticospinal tracts in one hemisphere of the brain. Other causes of hemiplegia include trauma, spinal cord injury, brain tumors, and brain infections. The normal forward step consists of two phases, stance phase and swing phase. The stance phase occupies 60% of the gait cycle, during which one leg and foot appear in most of all of the body weight. The swing phase occupies only 40% of it, during which the foot is not touching the walking surface and the body weight is borne by the other leg and foot. Let's view basic biomechanical features of hemiparetic gait. At initial stance, we may observe limited ankle dorsiflexion that may be caused by decreased activation of anterior tibial muscles and also knee hyperextension that may be caused by contracture of soleus or limited control of quadriceps from 0 to 15%. At mid-stance, we may also observe knee hyperextension and limited hip extension and ankle dorsiflexion with failure to progress body mass forward over the foot. This is all caused by contracture of soleus. At late stance or press swing stage, we may observe lack of knee flexion and ankle plantar flexion, prerequisites for push-off and preparation for swing. These occur due to the weakness of calf muscles. At mid-swing phase, we may observe limited knee flexion. It is caused by increased stiffness in unopposed activity of two joints, rectus femoris, and decreased activation of hamstrings. Let's have a look at normal gait cycle from the healthy side of this patient. The patient performs knee flexion, ankle dorsiflexion with a good range of motion in contrast with hemiparetic gait. Now let's analyze hemiparetic gait from the back side. At this point, we may see excessive lateral pelvic shift it caused by decreased ability to activate stance hip abductors and control hip and knee extensors. Also, patient demonstrates typical pathologic pattern of leg movement during hemiparetic gait. People living with hemiplegia usually undergo a combination of rehabilitation therapy. The rehabilitation process includes conventional gait training involves breaking down parts of the gait cycle, training and improving the abnormal parts, then reintegrating them into ambulation to return to a more normal gait cycle. This can include symmetrical weight bearing between lower limbs in stance, weight shifting between lower limbs, stepping training over level and unloved surface, heel strike or limb loading acceptance, single leg stance with stable balance and control, push off or initial swing of moving leg. The following components of gait are key to successful ambulation, support of the center of gravity by the lower limbs, propulsion of the center of gravity by the lower limbs, balance of the center of gravity as it transitions between weight-bearing limbs, controlling knee and toe cuffs for toe clearance and foot placement, optimizing rhythm and coordination. Functional electrical stimulation is useful modality for rehabilitation after stroke and can supplement neuromuscular reeducation and strengthening interventions. Functional electrical stimulation is used to elicit action potentials in the peripheral nerves of axonal branches and generate muscle contractions via surface electrodes placed over a muscle group. The intensity of contraction can be controlled by adjusting the amount of stimulus given by the functional electrical stimulation machine.